Jimmy Kemsky of Philly Voice is joining us here, kind enough to spend some time in a period where there's not really much going on. But you are chomping at the bit to ask away at Jimmy, right? Well, I, I, we got to talk a little Eagles, Absolutely. man. They're coming up with this Foles Week. It is Jimmy. Week. Are you pumped? It's Foles Week. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> is anybody going to play of note in this game? Like, uh, uh, can we miss it? I doubt it. Uh, I don't think you're going to see the stars at all. Uh, maybe at you know, all here and there, like in, in the first game. You know, those young corners all played, like Maddox and Sidney Jones and Razul. You know, maybe those guys will go again, but I don't think you're going to see anyone of note or anyone who's even the slightest bit nicked up playing this game. That's pretty much everyone. So, like, uh, certainly you're not going to see Wentz, I don't think. Uh, right. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to see a bunch of, uh, you know, second and third stringers and practice squad guys, then this is going to be the game for you. <laughs> well, Jimmy, I think oh, it was Gary goodness. Cobb made this point with you, Aton, on Fox 29 over the weekend about the hit on Nate Sudfeld and the way he went down trying to brace himself, you know, with his with both of his hands behind him. It's not really a common thing to do for a guy, for a football player that knows how to get hit and how to react to getting hit. Is there something to that that Nate, you know, Nate just hasn't been playing enough in the NFL and, you know, that where he really knows how to go down with a 285-pound lineman on top of you? Yeah, I hadn't given that. I mean, what, what, what did Gary want? Take, just take the concussion instead of the broken wrist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, you know, have, Back have of the, the head on the turf, man. Have, 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 him, uh, have the injury that will affect him when he's 65 as opposed to right now. Right, right. That's not a bad strategy. But, uh, you know, <laughs> At I, least I, you're I back on the field. That, we need but, him uh, in there, Jimmy. We need him in there. Is, is there any, yeah, I mean, and he, maybe not specifically to that, though, but is there anything to us not seeing guys usually fall that way? Uh, I don't know. I mean, again, I never really thought much about it. You know, maybe uh, there is probably a better way to fall than to put your hands back like that. And obviously he broke his wrist as a result of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just really hadn't given that any thought. Well, it's, it's just a good thing it's not his throwing hand. I mean, you know, but six weeks, I mean, he's going to miss, you know, a lot of reps, you know, here in, here in training camp and the rest of August where I think that would have really helped him, you know, look, more comfortable as the number two guy. I kind of liked what I saw when he was in there until that final series. Yeah, so I think that's the thing that maybe should be the focus as opposed to, you know, who's going to take his place as the number two while he's out. The, the bigger thing is that he's not getting the reps right. in this preseason where, you know, he can use them. And uh, I thought he did some nice things in, in the first preseason game. I actually thought he was really good in the preseason last year. He made a lot of play. He made a lot of deep throws that that mm -hmm. were just they, they were pretty. And that's kind of his the strength of his game is those deep throws. I think he throws with good touch all over the field. He doesn't have a cannon, obviously, that Wentz does. Like you're not going to ask him to throw from you know, the opposite hash to the sideline on like a 20 yard rope. You're just not going to ask him to do that kind of thing. Though I do think he's got like kind of a quick release, so he can get the ball quickly to you. You know, over the middle. I think he's good in the red zone. So, I mean, he's got some attributes that, that are appealing for sure. And he's way better than Cody Kessler and Clayton Thorson, obviously, yeah. as we saw in the preseason game and I've seen all throughout training camp. So it is a loss. I mean, we'll, we'll see if they will need him at any point during the first two weeks of the season, which he's projected to miss. Um, you know, obviously, that's not good <laughs> if, uh, if Cody Kessler is going to have to enter one of these games. And, uh, oh, man. The odds of that are pretty low. But, yeah, the point that you make that um, – that he could use these reps, you know, for in these in all these preseason games. I think that's the bigger point than who's going to take his place. Right. And and Jimmy, uh, hi, it's it's Matt Mullen from Philly Voice here. Hey Matt, um, what's going on, buddy? What's up, man? How are you? Um, You're late on your column, Jimmy. That's that's <laughs> what we probably matter. So no, I was just going to say, um, in addition to those reps being important for uh, for Sudfeld, aren't they? equally as important for the team to evaluate him moving forward because you know ideally he's not going to be playing in the uh in the regular season yeah i mean they i think they kind of know what they have at this point but i would agree that they certainly would have liked to have him have him go out there and you know get you know 10 to 15 throws per game in each of these games just to kind of um you know, kind of confirm what they think they already know about him, which is, you know, that he's a certainly capable number two quarterback in this league. Uh, but he's been with the team now for, for – this is his third year now. He didn't play 
uh, for the Eagles during training camp two years ago. They signed him off of waivers after Washington you know, cut him in 53-man cut down. So this is only a second training camp, but he's on the team for, for two full seasons and then this year as well. So I think they have a pretty good grasp on who he is and, and what he is as a quarterback. And certainly, you know, this year uh, he'll have a better grasp of the offense from a mental perspective than he ever has. Jimmy Kemsky covers the Eagles for Philly Voice, joining us on the Lighthouse Insurance guest line. All right, uh, has Andre Dillard punched anybody in practice today? <laughs> I missed it, uh, but he did kind of get in another little dust-up today, <laughs> apparently with uh, Sharif Miller. I didn't see it but uh, because they were in shells and shorts today. Uh-huh. So uh, normally when they're in pads, when they're, in, when they're, when they're running their seven-on-sevens, that's like the skill players, the wide receivers against the the corners and whatnot. Mm-hmm. The offensive linemen and defensive linemen go up each other, go up against each other in one on ones. So I always opt to watch that as opposed to the seven on seven. But they were in shells and shorts today, which means that they're not really going hard in those offensive defensive line drills. So I didn't watch that today, which was the mistake. Which that was a mistake, obviously, because there apparently was another dust up. But yeah, yesterday was kind of a scene because. You know, when he got in a fight with uh, Derek Barnett uh, after practice, he was, you know, visibly emotional by that. I mean, like he was in tears. Uh, had a long conversation with Howie Roseman and, and, and uh, Doug Peterson, and Barnett eventually came over, and they kind of bro-hugged it out. But, uh, you know, he was very emotional at, after practice. And actually his teammates kind of like to see that from him. And uh, Doug Peterson today was asked about it, and he said he liked to see you know, him, you know, competing as hard as he, as he has, and he likes to see a little emotion during practice. So, you know, I think it was generally viewed that as a positive thing, or at least the way that's the way they're positing it to us. But uh, yeah, I mean, it certainly was a, uh, it, it certainly was kind of a scene when, when he got in that fight and then he had another one today. So he's doing something to, to piss off his defensive line <laughs> teammates. I don't know what that is. Do you have any idea? And I know it's early and we haven't even seen the second preseason game, but have they given you any indication on how they're going to use him this year, knowing that Jason Peters might be an injury away from heading him over their starting job, but also that there might not be a room for him so long as Peters is healthy? Yeah, That's so they haven't cross-trained him at other positions like they have with uh, some of their other younger offensive linemen, and I think that's the smart thing to do. They want him to get as many reps as he possibly can at left tackle because ultimately – he, you know, he's going to be their left tackle of the future whenever Jason Peters retires. So, you know, they want to get him as many reps there as they can, and, and they're not worried about him playing other positions. Actually, Jeff Stalin was asked if he could play other positions in an emergency situation, and Stalin said that, yeah, he probably could. But, again, they just they just aren't cross-trading him there like they have with, you know, Matt Pryor, for example. Was, they're, they're working him at, at, four, at all four positions aside from center. And then, you know, they're cross-training Jordan Mailata at left tackle and right tackle. So I think Andre Dillard's role this year, barring an emergency situation, is that he's the backup left tackle, and that's it. Hey, Jimmy, do you think we'll see Carson at all in uh, week three nope. in that game? No, not at all? <laughs> no, nope, not at all. Wow. <laughs> no, I think uh, I don't think you're going to see him at all. And, you know, Doug was asked about that um, a few different ways today in his press conference. And uh, I think he pretty strongly hinted that you're not going to see him. And then even Wentz, when he talked today, uh, he said that there really wasn't any downside to him not playing in any of these games. So I don't think you're going to see him. Doug hinted uh, previously that uh, he wasn't going to play when he said that all these practices that they have every day, they're they're game-like settings. (laughs) I don't know Mm -hmm. if I buy that or not, but Mm -hmm. uh, he did say it. And it's also worth noting that they have joint practices next week with the Baltimore Ravens. He'll certainly practice against them. So he will get another look at a different defense other than the one, uh, other than the Eagles defense that he's been going up against every week. So you know, there's, there's merit in that. But I don't think you're going to see them put him in any kind of harm's way. Uh, you know, obviously he got injured in 2016 when he took a hit in the first game of the preseason. And actually missed the rest of the preseason as a result of that. If that were the regular season, he would have missed some games as a result of that. Hey, he cracked a couple ribs. So they're not going to put him in harm's way, and I think that's a smart move. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, do you think there's, you know, any neg- any ill effects that could come from him not playing in the preseason? Um, I know their their first, their week one game isn't the toughest competition in the world, but it's still going to be a step up from, from practice, what it, no matter what Doug says of how tough their practices are. 
Yeah, I think the downside of him playing in the preseason just far outweighs any advantage that you're going to have him playing in the preseason. And, you know, in the preseason, you're not even playing a full game anyway. Like, right. normally in the in the past with the Eagles, you know, they, they – or two two years ago, rather, with 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 Carson Wentz, he played he played in three preseason games. If I recall, he played one very quick series in that first game, and they got him out. And then he played like he played I think like a half in the quote unquote dress rehearsal game. So you know, I don't know if that made him more prepared for the regular season that year or not. Obviously, he came out and had an MVP type season, mm-hmm. but I think that you know again just the risk of him getting injured. You get him injured, and you got to play Cody Kessler. That's 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 bad news. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. that's not that's not good at all. So I think that you know number one priority is keep him upright. All right, Jimmy. Since uh, Carson's not going to play not only this week, he's not going to play at all. Give us something to look forward to that we might want to watch in the first <laughs> quarter or second quarter of this game against Jacksonville Thursday night. Hopefully, they have like a good like dog frisbee show during halftime. <laughs> <laughs> They were always my favorite. But, <laughs> what's the best dog to, to partake in that? Like, what's the best breed? Is it a collie? Yeah, that's a good question. Collie's a good one. Those little spaniels? Mm, the cocker spaniel. Collie's a good one, I think. Yeah, I feel like it yeah, needs to be like bigger than, than the spaniel. Hmm. Right. But it can't be huge. Like, it can't be a Great Dane. I have a wine run. Yeah, you can't have, like, a return. lumbering dog. Right. It has to be middle of the road. Like, you have to be a compact but, but agile dog. Like a Springer Spaniel. Yeah. I mean, a yeah, colleague. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen uh, if you've ever seen Best in Show. Oh, sure. Yeah. The judge who doesn't know anything about you know the dog competition. <laughs> He's asking the guy who does. You know, which dog would be good at? Which dog would be the wide receiver? Like, which yeah. dog can run the farthest, the fastest? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jimmy, you, you were trolling Baldy, I understand, with this Josh Adams video. <laughs> Is there a beef? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, I, I love Baldy's enthusiasm. Uh, he does, in my opinion, maybe go a little over the top uh, in terms in preseason. of preseason. Yeah. Players. But, uh, so I just I don't know. The idea popped in my head. I just did it real quickly. I put it up, and uh, it did a lot better than I or you know it, it got you know it got retweeted and, and kind of passed around a little bit more than I was anticipating. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, no, I do. I do enjoy those baldy breakdowns, but uh, he's got to temper the praise. I, again, the enthusiasm's great, but you got to temper the praise. Like I think, for example, in the Eagles, he said Jordan Bailata was the best player on the field. And come on. Like, <laughs> he was okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on. Hey, real quick, Jimmy. Um, we were talking about this with the shark thing earlier and, and your name got brought up not only because you're joining us at one o'clock but because you're yeah. a surfer we've talked surfing before with you have you ever or i i don't know if you but if you haven't have you ever come into contact with anyone who has ever successfully survived a shark attack by punching it in the nose <laughs> uh i've not no uh, i've been out in the water when sharks are out there hmm. but i never i've never seen or had any kind of close interaction uh you know with with a shark but in, in your surfing <laughs> days i mean hey, come on like in your great barrier reef days you've never surfed <laughs> with some chick from australia well, who said you know I, I use i punched that shark right in the nose uh, i can't do australian uh, accent yeah, but will, you know we get the well that's point, not yeah. what you do you, you don't punch them in the nose that doesn't do anything you, you try to poke them in the eye oh is that right oh yeah yeah. Easier said than yeah. done, I think, on either account, right? Well, yeah, if a shark is coming after you, your chances aren't very good, no. especially being on, on their turf and whatnot. Yeah. But that's what you want to do. You want to go for their eyes, not punch. If you punch them in the nose, they're just going to laugh at you in their shark laugh, and then they'll eat you. <laughs> See, good, gets good shark yeah. insight. Great stuff, Thanks, Jimmy, Jimmy, as always.